Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. For this video, I'm going to switch my control module from a Nano to an ESP32. I've been getting some requests for it in the comments of the YouTube videos, and I just so happen to need to use one for work. I have to set up some communication between some computers, and I'm thinking this might be a good way to do it. And then if I hook up a connection, I might even be able to uh, do some troubleshooting or see if I've got any errors between my connection. Now, I'm going to be learning this along with everyone else on this, so I'm going to start off kind of basic. And for this one, I'm just going to configure the network, um, connect, see if I can see some SSIDs, and get the signal strength of the SSIDs, and then display them on the connection itself. The model I have is a 30 pin unit and I'm going to get learn this just along with everyone else so I'm not sure what the difference is between them. I bought a 30 pin and a 38 pin and they seem to be quite a bit different. But I'm going to go with this 30 pin module because I've noticed that it uses serial port 2 on these pins 6 and 7 down here. And that means I won't have to alter my code, I'll be able to treat my Arduino code just as if I was using a mega. So that's really the only reason I'm doing it. And as far as connections, that's all I'm going to be using as far as connecting to it. Otherwise, I'm going to be using the commands that are in the ESP32 itself since it supports Wi-Fi. Now for the Arduino portion of this, as I said before, I'm going to use serial port 2. But I'm going to have to comment out these lines. Just like I was using a Mega. And then I also have to install the driver or the, the board manager and some libraries. Now that I have that all set up, um, I've got to change my pin mode here. 13 is the built-in LED on the Nano, but for this one it's pin 2. And then over in the delay, I have to do the same thing. So now I should be able to upload this, but when you upload it, sometimes you have to press a button. And I'm going to go over that while I'm uploading it here. You can see I have it compiling down here, and pretty soon it will go to loading. And then I have to push this button, and it's right up here on the ESP. And I found that sometimes I have to press that button, and sometimes I don't. I don't think I really had to that time, but you can see that the light is flashing every second. So really all we've done at this point is, is, is make the light act like the blink experiment in the Nano. And eventually I want to look into how to not use this Wi-Fi library. But for now we're going to add a library to the Arduino code or to the ESP. And it's the Wi-Fi.h. The other thing is, is at first we're going to report the SSIDs. We're going to do a search for SSIDs and we're going to do that in the serial monitor. So I'm going to change this delay length to 10,000 or 10 seconds. So that way we're only scanning every 10 seconds and we don't flood the uh, serial monitor too quickly. Down in this area everything will stay the same. We're going to keep this input function because we will be pulling data from the action eventually and I want to run this asynchronous delay and then this will just ignore for now. We'll go over to the Delay tab now. And right now, all we're doing is turning that light off and on. And they make it pretty simple. All I have to do is do this Wi-Fi.scan networks, and it will return an integer of how many networks that it currently finds 
that we're seeing. Now I'm in my house, so I'm not going to see very many networks. I did set up a cheap controls one just so that we can play with it a little bit. And if we return um, zero, in other words, we don't find any networks, we're going to say no networks found. Now if there is a wireless networks and we find them, then we're going to go down to here. And for each network, we're going to have an integer i, and we'll call those networks, or we'll search for them. And it's as simple as calling the function wifi.ssid, and then we put a number in there. If we wanted to just find the first one, we could put zero, but in this case we're going to count them all and see how many there are. We're also going to look for the strength of the signal. and We do that with this, with this uh, wifi.rssi and then the same variable. Once again, if we were just looking for the first one we found, we could put a zero in there. But we, it will come back as an integer, so we have to put string in front of it. So we'll serial print the ssid, a space, and then the strength. So we're going to give this a shot. We'll upload it and see what happens. And I have two networks, and you can see that it's just going to keep going, doing those every 10 seconds, showing the different networks. And it shows the signal strength for each network. So, so far, so good. Now we'll see if we can get it going with the next show. Now in the next show, we're going to do this very simply. We don't have a whole lot going on. I'm going to have this text field right here. And I'm, I'm going to have it set up as multi-line and that way I can just display my SSIDs in here. But when I go to send the SSIDs from the Arduino, I need to know how to put a new line in. Because if you look at the, the text field over here, It looks like it's one word, find SSIDs, but we know that's not true because if I click on it here, it brings up this multi-line and we could add another line to it. Like that. If I go OK, then we know we have three lines. So I have this button down here and I'm going to send this out in debug just to see what we're sending after these that isn't displaying. So I have this print s t zero dot text out the serial port. So I'll go into debug now and we'll see what it is we're sending. So we're going to see it down here when I press it, and you can see I've left it in hex because I know find is four characters, so the first four, and then it's got a zero d and a zero a, and a zero d is a carriage return, and zero a is line feed. And if I hold my mouse over it you can see the find, the 0D, 0A, SSIDs, 0D, 0A, and then hello. So when we send the data back from the Arduino, we have to include a carriage return and a line feed between each SSID and the uh, signal strength. And then in order to request that the ESP32 looks for the SSIDs, we're going to use this button here. And I'll put a link down in the description of why I use what I use here or go into more detail on it. But we're just going to print and we're going to print C colon C, which is our delimiter that says we have a command. The command is going to be GSS or get SSID. And then a value of 0, 01. In this case, we're not going to look for a value. Whenever we get the command GSS, we're going to do a search for those SSIDs and then send them back up to the next one. So that's really all there is to the next one in this case. Now I'm going to run this in um, debug. I'm not going to have an actual display. I had really planned on doing this with an intelligent display, um, but I had some issues with it today. So instead I'm just going to do it in debug, and I'm going to use this text field. I thought about using a combo box over here, but of course that won't work, except unless you have an intelligent display. And I could have done the intelligent display in the debug, but I thought this is a little more interesting because we're going to do a multi-line field, and so we have to send that carriage return in that line feed. So now we'll switch back over to the uh, Arduino. Okay, I don't want it to be doing this portion of it anymore in the delay, so I'm going to comment this out. Instead, we're going to go over to the input area. 
whenever there's serial data available on the main tab over here, we're going to run this input function, which is in this tab. And in the input function, we're going to collect the data one character at a time. And if we exceed the length of three, and it's not C colon C, we're going to reset that data from display. But if it is C colon C, we're going to go down here. And we're going to pull the command out of it, in this case GSS, and we're going to pull the value out of it, even though we're not going to use it. And then we'll print that. But here's where we're going to change this from test command. I always leave that in there in case I just want to do a quick test. And now if the command is equal to GSS, we're going to want to do something. In this case, we would print test command CMD in the value, which would be 0, 1. But we're not going to worry about that right now either. Instead, we're going to do the same thing we did on the other page. We're going to have an integer of n, and we're going to do the Wi-Fi.scan wi networks, which will give us the number of networks that, are, that we can see. But we're also going to have to initiate a string called upload string, and then that way we can create the string we're going to send up to the Nexion display. We're also going to report the same thing. If n is equal to 0, in other words, if it can't see any networks, we're going to zero print line no networks found to the local monitor, but we're going to change that upload string to say none found. And that's what we'll send to the Nexion, and it should show up in that T0 field. But if there are networks, we're going to do, once again, the similar thing. We're going to go through each network. Only the first time through, if it's equal to zero, we're just going to get the SSID and the signal strength. But every time after that, if it's greater than zero, we're going to put this carriage return and line feed. And we do that by an escape sequence of an R and an escape sequence of an N, or a backslash R, backslash N. And since we put it at the beginning here, it will actually be at the end of the last command that was put out. And then this way, on the last command that we do, we won't add it to the end. So it will only be in between each, each individual SSID. And then once we collect the SSID, we're going to add it or append it to that upload string. And we're going to do the same thing with the uh, signal strength. So we're going to get the, the name of the network and the signal strength. And so then we're going to serial print T0 text, and whenever we do text, we have to have the quotes, so we'll escape that out with a backslash, so that'll insert a quote into the string, and then the upload string, and then we have to have another quote, and then we have to end it with that 0FF three times, and I have that in this variable. And that's all there is to it. We should now be collecting the Wi-Fi networks for, on the ASP32 and then sending them up to the Nexion display. So we'll give it a shot here and hopefully it works. Well, the upload worked. And what's strange is during the day when I was kind of messing around with it to, to create the video, I had to press that button almost every single time. But this evening, it seems to be just going without pressing that boot button. I'm not 100% sure why that is that way, but uh, if anyone knows, go ahead and put it in the comments. First, I have to connect it to the uh, Arduino. And you do that by coming over here to this MCU input. And I know that my Arduino is connected to 10, so there should be a second one, and there is, COM21, and then we'll connect to it. And I set the 9600 in the setup of the Arduino. So we have it started. I'm going to press this button. We should get something down here, and then we should get something back here. And we did. And you can see we've got two networks. They both have a single strength of 50, which are negative 50, which makes sense because they're both coming out of the same router. And if I go over here, you can see that we have that 0D, 0A in between the different uh, SSIDs. It's really nice. I'm really looking forward to messing with these. But so far, really, the only difference I can see is the fact that I believe they're a little bit faster. They have multiple um, serial ports on them, and they're really cheap. Like, I got three of them for 20 bucks, so I felt like that was a pretty good buy. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up.
and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.